Hello and welcome to episode 25 of Africanists Assemble. This month, we turned back to literature and asked our pool of contributors the following question. If you were asked to contribute to an upcoming book fair titled African Literature of Today, which contemporary African literary works in any language would you recommend and why? Let's see what kind of hypothetical book fair they created together. Madam, I see the say, Mamma, my queen, I say, my chair, my dream room, do my dear so now. I am a Nigeria pa, say, Ah, Mamma, my whole crying, say, me to me, dear, ah, Cassa, a charm of room, and so, a digma, or, ah, my dream, my dear so now. We are dear, say, your poor man, basso, now fee, your son, she won't cry, say, won't call so, ah, now, mony. Now, a woman, ah, Miss Susu, say, I was say, a can a woman be a who do me die a a cosu will be brim high a woman a Christel Zami Ami Troye a a war a fin pinuni a dunum yunum. Now, some woman a tree a a dasso and they say Ami a woman a hodro a brofocasse monobecasse a Ami series. Now, some woman a chair a barrier be a usi so na nini j. A nyoma a a tray hun a shia hun na ope a quaya obefaso a bohoban a uhun se ni pani ye ni ye su a to me a a ka na fe a to nyama a tray hun ye hun a shia no hun a chima a nunti a ofa quine be bree so a obe to me a dia bo uria hoban a fe obe to me so de a boa Moa, a no more ot me a quon kind will mujume de moon. I fee, what bobble so men who bind. Now, what far quine be brave soon so at the adani near ma. I say any ayeno near my fofro. In tea, some woman, your woman be a trauma and quara and quara, muddy, eh, in fee, eh, in sia, a coping, eh, a junum. Now, woman. Dear, a year Nijia will mook round so they say. A young woman be a Yadani and ye a aqua cassa, a bibrium cassa, bibrium, a year one tree dear, and a home and once a man making a affin so a young woman crona, your one one on a cassem, your war kiswahili cassem, your isuzulu cassem with ye, and your war Arabic cassem with ye. Affin so your war French dear, and your war in a brothel, and so. I just finished reading River Spirit by Leila Abulela and to me this is the kind of book and the kind of author that I would include in a book fair on African literature of today. Which is very interesting because the novel is about the Sudan in the 1870s and 1880s. My excitement about this novel is wrapped in Abulela's commitment to writing about a history that, as far as I know, claims very little space in North African historical fiction, the Turkish Ottoman rule. I know that writers of historical fiction carry out extensive research in the process of their writing, but Abulela's river spirit tops the charts for me. At the end of the novel, the author provides a list of important sources that she consulted during the writing of the novel. And that I found to be a clear demonstration of the labor that goes into writing African historical fiction. And this is very particular because in most cases, we are faced with a lack of sources, even as academics. And I believe that the same applies to writers of fiction who often have to work with very little reliable um, information historical information, I mean. And so I found this um, presentation by Leila Abulela of sources that uh, she consulted to be a bridge between the fictional and the factual, a bridge between the imaginative and the academic. And to me, this is, um, at the moment, um, the type of um, African writing 
that I would like to see more of and that I would like to talk more about and therefore that I would uh, present to um, a book fair on African literature of today. At the book fair that I'm supposed to imagine, I would create a table or shelf with women's literature because by coincidence I have read a couple of female authors recently. The late Ghanaian writer Ama Ata Aido, the Zimbabwean Tsitsi Dangaremga and the Zanzibari author Zainab Alawi Bahroun. Somehow their texts have started to have conversations in my mind, mostly as they depict female biographies, coming of age stories and a feeling of getting stuck and torn, struggling with belonging to different worlds, the diaspora and Africa, the traditional village, society and the promises of modernity and also how these promises actually become betrayed. What I find most interesting, they depict the lives of intellectual women seeking to find their space. I went back to Ama Ata Aido's books when she passed away recently. May she rest in peace. So she definitely deserves a table at the book fair. Her novel, Our Sister, well, the first novel, Our Sister Killjoy, or Reflections from a Black-Eyed Squint, is the debut novel, which came out in 1977. It's about a young African woman named Sisi who goes to Europe to study. She observes the other African migrants increasingly critically who've basically come for the same reason. So also the desire for a better life in Europe. And um, she becomes more critical because she sees how they end up forgetting about their African roots. But what are African roots in a post-colonial setting? The novel thinks about the psychological effect of colonialism in a way echoing Fanon or even Ngugi and the romanticist, if not elusive, endeavor to reconnect with one's past. And that's, in a sense, the question then that the novel poses. I see the psychological but almost physical pain so much echoed in Tsitsi Dangaremga's latest novel, This Mournable Body, which came out in 2020. It's the last part of the trilogy, which started with the most acclaimed Nervous Conditions. While in Nervous Conditions, which I adored when I read it at the time, Tambutsai, a young girl from the village, stubbornly fights for her education at a time when the nation is also emerging, so a true coming-of-age story. In This Mournable Body, years later, Tambutsai lives in a rundown youth hostel in downtown Harare after, qu after quitting her job. Such a contrast between the future she hoped for and her reality. The novel is written from a very interesting perspective, which adds to the pain, um, the feeling of, of being stuck, but also of being observed and judged. It's an omniscient narrator addressing Tambu as a second person, you observing her, knowing her too well. And there is a strong co contrast between the term of address, you, which um, suggests an idea of being empathetic, and the narrator who, for instance, watches her in a job interview in a cold, matter-of-fact way. And um, the gaze of the narrator really seems to fix her. Then in Fanani, a novel written in Swahili by the Zanzibari writer Zainab Alawi Bahroun, which came out last year, two sisters become trapped by the romantic poems of a famous poet, Vuai bin Hamdani, much to the concern of the mother, B. Zamda. The poems, which are part of the book, so spell out the dreams and desires of the two, which are not only in conflict with their expected social roles as future um, wives and mothers, but also turn out to be as well based on an illusion as you might have already guessed. So um, the poet is a very dubious figure. And furthermore, the secrets of Bizamda's earlier life also impact on the present, as in most Zanzibari novels, including those of Abdurazak Gurna, the complicated relationships of the past have a bearing on the present. Like the two other novels, also Fanani seems to ask how liberation, particularly for women, is possible at all. And like in this mournable body, the expected bright future does not come and the present is full of frustration and stagnation. Well, for me, I would like to recommend a relatively unknown work, at least on the global stage, since the event is a book fair. And it is Daniel Fagunwa's Forest of a Thousand Demons, a Hunter's Saga, translated to English by Nigeria's Nobel laureate, Professor Woloshenka in 1968. This book was written in 1938, yet its significance has rarely been discussed or even become the subject of global scholarship, partly because it 
primarily belonged to the Yoruba literary tradition and the language in which it was originally written, and partly because it does not deal with social realism, which preoccupies most of contemporary African works. Yoruba is Nigeria's second most spoken language. However, it is precisely because of these reasons that Fagunwa's Forest of a Thousand Demons is a very significant contemporary work worthy of recommendation for a book fair. I will commence with the second reason and end with the first in my discussion. Seven hunters are chosen by the king of an African community to go to Mount Lamburu from where anyone could hear the cock crow in heaven. Well, that is a kind of utopia anyway. To procure what would contribute to well-being and peace of this community. Facilely, this is not social realism, but it has humanistic significance. This quest for well-being and peace of the community. So with the entrenchment of colonial ways of life that has considerably faced off the autochthonous African way of life, what formerly brings about peace and well-being to the African has become increasingly elusive. So when the king of Lamboro tells the seven hunters that the things that give or enhance communal good and peace of people within that community is that they must love one another, he is right. Charity is very important for communal well-being. It is with this moralistic injunction which the king of Langbodo gives to the hunters that Fagunwa establishes his work as the first Yoruba decolonizing by letter. So I come to the first reason why it is normally not regarded in the global arena of scholarship. That the work is written in Yoruba is rather an advantage than a deficit because it offers in its original form the cosmological structure of an African community before the colonial intervention. Whoever will read it for the first time will notice the work offers its rich resource to both English and Yoruba readers, a rare feat for today's African literature that caters to only English or speakers of any colonial language or a colonial language. Even at that, the translation has been praised to have further enriched the African literary tradition created in English. So, for me, <laughs> for any book fair, I would recommend Fagunwa's Forest of a Thousand Demons. Its sublimity as an original indigenous African literary work remains to be beaten. I would zero down to the African novel because of the manner in which the novel helps to portray the diversity of Africa in terms of thematic concerns, in terms of the manner in which authors depict various issues. I would therefore settle on one novel titled The Secret Lives of Babasegi's Wives, published in 2010, and it is written by the Nigerian author Lola Shoneyin. This story revolves around the polygamous family that is headed by Babasegi, who is the protagonist, together with his four wives, namely Iyasegi, who has two children, Iyatope, who has three children, Iyafemi, who has two children, and Bolanle, who has no child. As the title announces... The mutual secret or secrets these wives hold is the jam or fuel that propels the plot of this fascinating 28 chapter story. Now, the subject or the thematic concerns of this novel are wide ranging, and that is the reason why I would recommend this book. This novel explores a wide range of themes from polygamy to betrayal, a conflict between the tradition or tradition and modernity, not just in Nigeria, but in Africa in general. Now, what I like most about this book is the author's treatment and portrayal of the characters in terms of uh, their complexity, 
the complexity of their relationships as well as their individual aspirations and desires. And this is actually what goes into the making of great characterization. Now, in this book, the protagonist, Baba Segi, is portrayed as that masculine character, that patriarchal figure, where one's masculinity is determined by the ability to sire one's own children. But ironically, Baba Segi, as the story uh, comes to an end, discovers that he cannot sire children. He is infertile. Another fact is that the fourth wife, that is Bolanle, the educated university graduate, is the one who upsets the order in Babasegi's household and she is the one who leads to the discovery of the secrets of the other first three wives. It is only Bolanle who has no extramarital relationship and that is why she cannot get pregnant. So the resolution of this novel is that Babasegi despite the deception and betrayal of trust by these three wi- first three wives, ends up accepting all children and treating them as their own. And finally, Bolanle leaves the household and discovers that she has the agency to make choices that can lead to the healing of the trauma that has characterized her life. I highly recommend this text to anyone who would attend the African Literature Today book fair. Asante kwa kutuuliza swali hili. Nadhani ningekuwa na mapendekezo mengi, lakini kwa leo nianze na matatu. Hivi karibuni nimekuwa nikirudia riwaya za Ivan Adhiambo Uor mwandishi wa Kenya. Na riwaya hizi ziliandikwa kwa Kiingereza. Moja ni Dust na nyingine ni The Dragonfly Sea. Na kwa namna fulani hizi riwaya mbili nazo zitaja ni tofauti sana kwa sababu Dust inahusu sana jijini Nairobi na Dragonfly Sea mazingira yake sana ni pwani ya Kenya. Dunia mbili tofauti tuseme kwa kiasi fulani. Lakini kwenye riwaya zote mbili tunaona uhodari wa mwandishi huyu hasa katika kuwakilisha wahusika wa kike na kuchunguza maisha yao. Na pia navutiwa sana na na kupenda sana namna Ivan Adhiambo Uor anavyochunguza historia ya Kenya na maswali muhimu katika historia hiyo. Na pendekezo langu jingine ni riwaya ya mwandishi wa Madagascar. Mwandishi huyu anaitwa Naivo na kwa Kiingereza riwaya yake ni Beyond the Rice Fields. Ilifasiriwa kutoka Kifaransa kuingia Kiingereza. Ni riwaya ya kwanza ya Madagascar kufasiriwa kwa Kiingereza na inanifundisha mengi kuhusu historia ya Madagascar. If I was to make a contribution or a suggestion on the topic African literature of today, my first suggestion would be Helen Habila's The Travelers. And that's because it reflects the happenings of or the situation of the African in the contemporary cosmopolitan society. It shows how he struggles to fit in, especially to a Western tradition which usually especially that of the american which usually claims superiority over other cultures into it so on the whole it's just microscopic example of what actually happened you know how cultural walls are broken down how national barriers you know are also broken down in order to have global or globalized system or culture 
and it shows the inevitability of um you know the the shift looks like it's a blend but actually there's some superiority in it and on the whole it's something that is definitely coming and with time it will come maybe certain residues or vestiges would remain A work I will recommend for a book fair on African literature today is Chinua Achebe's Arrow of God. The novel, which was published in 1964, in my judgment, remains one of the best African literary texts for some key reasons. The storyline of Arrow of God revolves around Ezolo, the chief priest of the six villages of Omara who are worshippers of a deity Olo. The novel is set in a traditional Igbo society in 1920s during the colonial era in Nigeria. The novel explores diverse dimensions of conflict, the clash between African culture and colonial system of government, the conflict between traditional worship and Christianity, the clash between a chief priest and the deity he worships, a clash between man and self. Some of the silent factors that make the novel, a classic, include the use of language. The novel is a cultural narration of a traditional Igbo society during the colonial era. It captures all aspects of Igbo culture and life. The novel is written in English, but the author's artistic manipulation of the linguistic resources in English to realistically capture the experiences, the ideologies, the perception, speech mannerisms, thought patterns of Igbo people remains impressive. The presupposition of diverse aspects of Igbo culture and linguistic resources, such as proverbs, riddles, speech thought patterns, on English makes the work a resourceful documentation of Igbo history, culture, and daily life. At a base arrow of God, Thus provides scholars across space and time which rich source of data on Igbo culture and civilization. Apart from diction, the characterization, easy flowing narrative sequence, among all the features of the novel, enhance the aesthetic appeal of the work and make the novel inviting to a large audience within and outside Africa. The thematic concerns of the novel contribute to the novel's appeal across time and space. Achebe explores in Arrow of God diverse dimensions of conflict, which we have mentioned earlier. The conflict raises relevant questions, even in contemporary times. The outcomes of the conflict in the novel settle on religion. Religion remains a sensitive and central aspect of African culture. The question on the role of man in the worship of God, in particular, the role of Arrow of God such as Ezolo in diverse aspects of life of the people, the politics, the economy of the people recalls. The question is to what extent can a messenger of God exercise authority in the worship of a deity? These critical questions raised in Arrow of God are timeless. My name is Enoch Anan from the Bureau of Ghana Languages. And with regards to this, I will opt for Americana, which was written by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. The reason why I would recommend for this literary work is the fact that it's a novel that explores a theme of race, identity, and love through the eyes of a Nigerian woman living in the United States. And it also offers a thought-provoking commentary on cultural differences and the immigrant experience, which I believe, if worked on in a lot of languages aside from English, will throw more insight into the issues of immigrants. You know, every now and then we have Africans moving from Africa, traveling all the along the Atlantic Ocean, going to the America, into Europe. Most people even travel into 
Asia and the Middle East areas like the Qatar, the, the United Arab Emirates and Co. And the issues about immigrants uh, has become a very big concern for the United Nations as a whole. So I believe that this book really, really true an insight. It gives an insight, a thought-provoking commentary on the cultural differences that and you know, what immigrant experience when they get to some of these areas. And so the people who want to travel should be able to get abreast with some of these issues. And so if these books are translated into this literary work, actually, it's translated into the likes of Hausa, Asante Tree, Yoruba, and a lot of other African languages, I believe it will throw more insight into the issue of immigrant and it will be well explained, especially in the local dialect, for people to understand the kind of experience that immigrants go through along their, their life of travel. Thank you. As soon to now, I'm going to be there with them now, or I'm not going to go soon or I'm not going to go soon, I'm 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 going to go soon, i am going to go Ntachi obi, mkwebi, inwe jumafo, nile kwa sanya ni nyonye cho, inwe obi inabata mmeri, obi mbagara, ndorega wazi. Obo mako onyo kuno nye tanamba nyego chako kwa ahu, ego na afu nye ba. Ode eja atu matu oku na atu mata agumagu, cho agumagu ya mwa. Isi awa na agumagu abu gona, mwa maru nye ma mwa akonu uche, nina ya mwa mbode na mwanta. Mbe kore yankwa nange ti a chi anu la wakwa pramari. Ebe ebu mnuche yanu wwa ape ego ta kukwa. Okwe tari gabi nino e nina ya. Bo mwe kwe no uwele. Mwenye nina yuku ije mma nyono ye kwa kwa. Odore ya anyane ebu mnuche ya gage emezu. Mbo oke mme kwe ije mme kwe ezi yo jiti. Ya se no li ije mma bapo. Bala mo lo nina nina ya nudu mwaka. Nye kwe ki kogwa ni onu ntu habo dola ya azo. Ya kwe bie iji yo mwene. Ala nankuro sisi. Mena akoro, na ako inye, abakwa mberahe. Oki dutu na nkwe biya inwe ta mmeri, nanduwa, mene ya aga chama hadum, turugo. Mehu lo oru nke ya, mwe ego na konoba, dia mwe kwa ezibo ezu nolo. Onzu kwa tachara otu tinye gale ten na yuku na unye ya, ndi karana nka maada ube. Inye mutadi na agumagu abo, wanto obila kwe sirema inyo cho mwa. Oka atoro ime bojibo, ne ime zugi mkwa. Mdu sori ke mwenezi ugo. Ki hii mwere chuge afo, ma were ya na anisi. Aga hapo mwaka, aka hana akpakoreta, ma gosi kuta unyinye nsi na chinga. Odigo ono zona adigide nuwa. Mwante ukwe la, kuko tutu aha, kuku yisi. Legida anya ni hii ni eme, ke ni hapi idu hegi. Age mwobi ina bata mmeri, mwobi mbagara. Unyobu la gehia sana anya, mbocho li luji mwabu mwini. Aguma agwa kwe serebo mpana kanezi nuno ni hile. Hana matuwa do katu wale aguma agwa stena susi ibo gana asuso mbande ozo. Ntu ala kukwa anu tadukona steba neko fahi ya uonye bulililu. Akukona na aguma agwa siteru uzo na potatagini. Kato inyo joni nendi gunyere ime buwa mbegi. Ndi nturobia idi ume ngu. Oka ato mego nuzo nezi ezi. Idi mada agwa gu ego. Ntoro mmadu. Ipi tego ni kuku, neta nena nota, make mwegi akonova, nde uonu. In contemporary time, it is difficult to pinpoint a test that equals those literary tests that were published by African writers at pre, during, and post-colonial era. In contemporary Africa, the few writers now available are doing their best but not comparable with what existed before now. It is therefore very difficult for me to recommend a contemporary literary test that befits that much of the immediate past in Africa. However, there are writers who strive to write, but it is seemingly impossible to match what existed before them. 
This is due to lack of focus, grant availability, dependable publishers, and robust readership. However, one of the latest recommendable literary works in recent time is There Was a Country by Chinua Achebe, a popular African writer. It was written in English language. It is recommendable because it details existing nation or nations within the nation of Nigeria. It is a historical literary work that attempts to give background information of the existing country called Nigeria and the ethnic nations within it. This came on the ground of marginalization of some ethnic groups and the claim of superiority over them by some ethnic groups in the country also. A cloud of imagination that does not exist. Another book worthy of recommendation is The Beautiful Ones Are Not Yet Born by Ai Kwe Ama. It revealed corruption that is pervading Africa up to this moment and is continuing and it is very much in vogue at this time. It was prophetic and the prophecies are manifesting as the rich gets richer, the poor gets poorer. Thank you. Victor S. Dugas Gidon Juju is a contemporary African literary work I would recommend if I was asked to contribute to an upcoming book fair titled African Literature of Today. My choice of um, Dugas Gidon Juju is hinged on the reason that the text is a postmodernist play published in the year 2021. As a creative writer and um, professor of theater and um, social change, the playwright in this play projects an African culture that is at the verge of dying or extinction, but complemented by way of modern processes to preserve its vibrant um, cultural heritage as the surest means to the community's survival and development. Though set in a fictitious Gwangwala kingdom and written in English, Duga in this text creatively casts a world where African culture coexists with modern inventions. In this sense, the play mediates a new or strange culture into the crisis ridden African culture that is stranded and unable to carry on when the lone traditionalist expected to enter the long-awaited uh, remains of the deposed king suddenly drops dead. It is um, in the absence of any traditionalist that the new, young and enlightened king incorporates foreign cultural and technological elements, notably the internet facility and the establishment of Gidon Juju, which is the Hausa translation for museum. And the museum in the play is where the bones of the late king, along with all the returning cultural objects forcefully taken by the British, are preserved for posterity. So, what emerges at the end of the play is a postmodernist creation of a new culture that is not based on one dominant mode of cultural expression, but an eclectic and hybrid culture made up of the African and Western cultures. If I was asked to contribute to an upcoming book fair titled African Literature of Today, and I have to choose amongst all the many books that are contemporary today, my very first choice 
will be a book by Toyin Falola, Mouth Sweeter Than Salt. And the reason why I have decided on Toyin Falola's book is because it dips into history and brings it out in a very accessible way, which is what I would consider that African contemporary um, literature does. It uses the oral voice in its written text and uses a, a lot of proverbs that will speak to our today. Young people who come across such a text would learn the past and also be confronted with these new ideas that a Yoruba mind has to contend with. There's a very interesting scenario in it about when you were born. When was my father born? And everybody was asking, why do you want to know the date of your father? And so such interesting ideas in the book will make for very good reading. And the whole quest, quest and the question we have is what is really contemporary African literature and what does it entail? Why not some of those books that talk about post-coloniality? Why not those books that talk about our post-independence period? And why would I want a book that simply addresses the African mind. And that's exactly why I chose um, um, Professor Tui Falola's book, because it has nearly all the elements in it, but it's a book that will thoroughly entertain and at the same time, um, give a sense of history in it without necessarily making it seem as if it's um, a text from an ancient past. Thank you. So I would like to give a different perspective to today's question. Being based at the Specialized Information Service for African Studies, which is a project at the African Studies Collection at the Frankfurt University Library. Here we try to purchase exclusively um, publications by publishers from the African continent. And book fairs for us are mostly a place where we try and purchase and acquire books for our collection. And so to me, the most important issue in book fairs that I think would warrant maybe a panel or a keynote, a round table, is the issue of distribution, because a lot of the African literature, uh, any publications by African publishers, be they academic or be they popular literature, it's difficult for us often to get a hold of them for our collection because distribution is such an issue. So that would be something that I would actually address at a book fair because it's, of course, not just an issue for us at the library, but it's also an issue for publishers. Now, some publishers are very strong and they do have a distribution network. Some have managed to group together, such as ABC, the African Books Collective, Others are working with kind of larger outlets such as Amatin, the different Amatin branches in mostly Francophone African countries are closely linked to the Amatin headquarters in Paris so that they can make use of their distribution channels. But it's something that we grapple with and we come across every now and again. And this is the reason why, for example, I actually visit book fairs on the African continent, such as the Ghana International Book Fair last year, in order to be able to acquire books for our collections, which aren't part of international distribution networks. So this would be actually a major issue in book fairs that I'd like to address, which is kind of an issue that is 
apart from and in a way larger than the actual content of the publication is how to get access to these publications and how to um, assure a distribution for these publications that works on an international level. So that's it for me and from the Specialized Information Service for African Studies at the Frankfurt University Library. Those were all the contributions we received for this month's question. What do you think of their book picks? Are they a good representation of contemporary African literature? What books would you suggest we add to this imaginary book fair? Tell us in the comments below. Thanks so much for flipping through these book samples with us this month. Make sure you subscribe to see what other questions we challenge our contributors with in the realms of African languages and literatures. See you around. <laughs>